um, and doing what those bands did that I heard about. So we printed up like 25,000 on our own and just gave them out like everywhere. Like I would fly to like London and go to like the parking lot of a Cannibal Corp show Dude. with like a thousand CDs and just done. And Take that. Oh, he's not, yeah. he's not lying. I'm not lying. Dude, back on in the day, so in, in fucking real, we go to all use EMG pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible. Head over to emgpickups.com and use my promo code HEAVY at checkout and get 15% off. And then once you write the heaviest song of all time, head over to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Garza and save 30% off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms. And now to the heaviest podcast of all time. Is this a live photo? It's a live photo. Boom. Straight, straight to YouTube. Straight to the tube. <laughs> cool. For the gram? No, I just wanted it for personal stuff. Actually, no, that's but... for your Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Facebook. You, MySpace. Sorry, my MySpace. No, my MySpace. no, you know what I heard yesterday? That Facebook is like coming back in like a big way. I've heard that too, actually. Interesting. So this is like, it's kind of been brewing, but yesterday I, I was just browsing like uh, Gary Vee stuff. Th- that's where I heard it. He just pops my, yeah. He is like, I'm, I try to avoid him. And he literally just pops up on my phone. I was, you know, mm-hmm. you're just browsing. I'm like, Gary Vee. I mean, he's, he seems like a great, cool guy. Yes. Well, okay, so there, Gary Vee, I think, is misunderstood. Why? He, because, you know, when you get, like, these influencer types or these, like, quote-unquote self-help types, a lot sure. of people think that they're scammers. And mm-hmm. a lot of them are. Well, yeah, exactly. But Gary V is actually a One. legit business person, legit investor, like just a legit powerhouse of a dude. And uh, the social media thing is something he just does on top of that. Mm-hmm. Like his marketing agency and his wine business, all that, that's all real. So wow. he's not full of shit. And um, he doesn't spend all day doing social media either. He has this huge team, like 30 people or something on his social media team. Dang, imagine that. So, yeah, so that's how so much content comes out. And also, I know people who have, like, worked with him, and the thing that I think people don't understand about people like that is uh, he's wired. He is wired for, like, 19 hours a day. Like, the dude is going for, like, 19 hours a day at, like, this level of energy the whole time. Like, he is that person Hmm. that, that you see on those videos. It's... It's a little freakish, apparently, but it's real. It's it's not an act. I wonder where he gets the energy from. Exactly, and how long can he do that? <laughs> but he's, dude, he's been doing it for, like, decades. Yeah, yeah he's been yeah. going on for a while, right? Well, now we've said his name about 100 times, so I'm sure it's going to be in all of our feeds. <laughs> oh, we're all fucked oh, now. He's already in my feed. Dude, I'm trying to avoid the guy. <laughs> he just pops up, like, literally in my face. His face is in my face. I'm like, dude, this is... But what do you mean with the, with the Facebook thing? <clears throat> What, what was it? Uh, like it comes back or some something like this, you said? Well, so it's been like falling off among, I guess, younger people. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've noticed, Facebook has become like the place for like old people to say crazy. <laughs> like us. <laughs> or, 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 or older. Old, yeah. Our parents. Older, yeah. No, no, for, no, no. Yeah, oh, to yeah, say, parents, exactly. Yeah, it's like a cesspool for, yeah. for like Parent older book. people. Yeah. yeah, and they were not getting younger people. Like they were the they were getting like very low numbers of you know teenagers and early 20s and it was just it was like falling off a cliff and mm-hmm. uh seems to be coming back i don't know why mm-hmm. um but it seems I to be coming MySpace. back i want yeah, my space back space. with the with yeah, the yeah. pages where Me you too. could upload like one or two songs <laughs> and that was scroll the and have your, your your one song that yeah you would highlight so, that was it was perfect i love it so uh we, we got we got some stats here from uh, jay Facebook users in the United States as of August 2023, age group 23.6% is 25 to 34, 18% is 18 to 24. That's actually a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot. And 3.4% is 13 to 17. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the group that, um, that they want, apparently. Oh, the nobody likes the old people. Yeah. No. no, interesting. You can't do syncopated dances on Facebook, so people don't want to use it. <laughs> also, like people have, have been sending me like uh, these. Oh, what is it, like Facebook? Uh, f- so, for example, I'm I'm looking for a Mesa cab, and it's it's driving me insane. 
I, I can't find anything. People have been sending me Facebook groups of people selling amps. Mm-hmm. I was like, so it's kind of been creeping back into into my my life without Ooh, trying. That, that marketplace. Yeah. Yes. I yes. a lot on that marketplace. Ooh, that marketplace yeah. is a... Uh, it's an interesting place. Uh, you can find <laughs> you can buy anything. Interesting, <laughs> interesting things and interesting people. Oh yeah. fuck! Yeah, it reminds me of what was that site? Man, I'm blanking. Oh, Craigslist. 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 Yeah. yeah Craigslist. You know how dark Craigslist got? Is does it still exist? I think it. Oh no! In the, in the states, for us, we have different things. No, it still exists. It still exists. Oh, it's it, still going. Do wow. not contact me. <laughs> <laughs> it, I didn't know it's still going. Really? Yeah. yeah I guess yeah. so. I guess uh, it's missed connections. Mis- yeah, that's the one. There it is. Do not contact me with unsolicited. <laughs> yep. I was I was big on Craigslist buying all the gear off there. I was selling I was selling all my shit there and buying shit there. Yeah, so I think Facebook Marketplace. The idea yeah, is to you know be a better version. Oh yeah. But, what the hell? <laughs> there oh, we go. No. no, no, click it because it always says do not contact me <laughs> at the bottom. Oh, oh, he didn't write it. Wow, usually they always put. So someone put up an ad looking for a lady to, you could use your imagination, ride off her to LA to LA. Huntington Beach. Oh, wow. Or you could just do it in the car. It's there going go. strong. Sounds yeah. very good sketchy. Shape. No, no, no. In good shape is definitely the most important yeah, part of that. In good shape, exactly. <laughs> these are the things that... <laughs> meeting up with nobody in shape. Hey, yo, these are the things that you want to know before you're about to jam. Yes. You, you, you want to know what's out there, right? I think it's important. Yeah. <laughs> I think it matters. <laughs> you got to do your due diligence. <laughs> Dude, it, it's an honor to sit down with, 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 with your whole band. M- minus one, correct? Minus one. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank, uh, thank you guys for making time. Thank, thank you for having us. Of course, thanks. Thanks. We, have, yeah. we have people from all over the world, correct? Yeah, like two Austrians, so we are the Austrian group. Nice. Yeah. Here's <laughs> America. The American yeah. <laughs> Austrian yeah. coalition. I like how we segregated it right yeah. off the bat here. Yeah, true. Like Europe. You guys have Europe. to share a mic. I love that. Like, <laughs> yeah. we're going to put them together because yeah, yeah. they're kind of the same. So. <laughs> Dude, God, I put, like, you guys, you guys I just knew to sit at, at the same area. Yeah, That's you cool. Do. That's sick. Can we do a quick uh, in- intro to names? Sure, I start. I'm Krim, and I play drums. I'm Raphael, and I play guitars. I'm David, I play bass. Sean, and I uh, do vocals. A-all, guitar. Sick. Fuck yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, the other longest standing member is you, right, Sean? Correct, yeah. Is, is it kind of a trip that you, literally, like, you... You mind, I mean, years ago, you, you were working at Best Buy. Yeah. Then fast forward, you yeah. buy the CD at Best Buy. Yep. And fast forward 10 more years, now you're in a band. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. He actually is, has the story of quitting a job to go on tour like two days later. Like I put him in the hot seat. <laughs> uh, yeah. when Because we had actually another Sean that was vocalist for a little while, and he quit, and we had like two days before tour. Like I think it was... Full U.S. and Canada with Dark Funeral in 2007. Yeah. And I just called him and asked him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he had to quit his job and just uh, make that decision, which uh, I like that. I admire that. I admire that whenever someone's willing to throw their life away. For, for, <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah. Basically, basically like, what's happening. Well, they were in Ozfest, and he's like, you know, start learning the lyric because we may need you. And uh, then it came time, and he's like, hey, uh, so I think we need you. Uh, do you think you can quit your job and come on the road with us? I'm like, how many days? Uh, you got three days. That's a big ask. Yeah. That's a massive ask. Yeah. Yeah, to fr- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, to front a band that I've never played with before and then only to play in front of the label three days later. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. yeah, it was, it was, yeah, like we were doing, it just so happened to be routed to where New York would be the third show. When we, that was when we were on Roadrunner. So the entire staff was coming out to that show. It was like oh. literally his third show ever no with pressure. us. Nah, it's fine. I no. just totally bombed. It no, it was, a, it was a shit. <laughs> yeah, it, was shit. <laughs> it was like the worst show ever. No. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Nah, it, it was just because we hadn't had enough practice and they struck the drums and there wasn't a lot of mic. I think they just had two overheads for the drums. Sure. I don't even think they had kick mics for the drums. So How? the band kind of got off a bit and then I couldn't figure it out. Because, you know, when you're in a band long enough, you kind of can pick up where the guy left off or you know where you're at. But nah, yeah. I have no idea. It, so they, it was just one of those weird, just one of those weird situations. I think it was at BB King's, where yeah, it was. Yeah. There, just first of all, strange place. Do they still for, have shows there? I, well, I, I think little, they shut down. I don't know, but it's a strange place for a black metal tour. First it is. of all, it is. Yeah, and they, <laughs> the, the, yeah. So the, already it was strange, and um, we weren't allowed to just 
be efficient. So, mm. you know, it was just one of those shows where um, everything's kind of going wrong ahead of time. Yeah, and, you know, like one wrong. thing leads to another, like all the all the little things that you want running well or not running well. And then it's our third show and it goes like shit. But, but it's OK. I mean, haven't you guys had horrible shows? I'm oh, sure. Still. I'm sure. <laughs> Everyone has. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. And yeah. you happens. remember those specifically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I never forget them. <laughs> you don't remember like the life changing great moments. Yeah, ever. You remember like the one or two. Yeah. Like I missed that one word. Man, the guy in the crowd definitely noticed. Oh, it's fucked up. <laughs> nah, yeah. Have you ever had a terrible show where the crowd noticed? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's it's a terrible e- e- show. Even worse. <laughs> even when like, when, like, when people know you, you can't hide it. Yeah. Because during, yeah. during those moments, you're like, you, you go into like, oh, it sounds dumb, but you're going into like professional mode. Okay, I don't care what's going on. Like, I'll, you need to kind of, like, yeah. you know? Yeah, you got to make it happen. Sh- the no show must what. go yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm still, you're still going to rock out. You're going you're gonna to pretend like the monitor's is perfect and the sound, you pretend like the amp is working. But sometimes you just can't shake it off. Your soul's and, like, dead. The soul's dead, yeah. and people yeah. just know. Yeah, and uh, we're one, we're one of those bands where like there's no middle ground. We have either the best shows ever, or like if we're not all by firing, it's just something happens. It's like it's just it's like we're flop. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds it sounds it like raised my blood pressure just to think about, just to think about um, that kind of show. It's a nightmare. New York it, is a nightmare. Yeah. New York is a yeah, nightmare because yeah. you have to continue. Yeah. You cannot just say yeah. like okay. It's it's a bad day. I just leave because it's like yeah. Let's just quit for now. We'll come back later. They were really yeah. trying to push metal shows at, at that one venue too. I'm I'm, I'm not sure why. Was BB Kings? Yeah, Pro- yeah. probably. Uh, they were really pushing it. They probably had a metal employee, you know, mm-hmm. metalhead employee. Then the person left, and I've noticed that with places or companies that suddenly will go into metal, mm-hmm. like an instrument company or a gear company or a venue or something. Yeah. Suddenly they'll take this like left turn into metal and like metal, metal, metal. And then sure. that person leaves and they are back out of metal. So usually I've noticed it's like this one person. It's always one person. So it's, huh? it's, it's usually one person. Yeah, the lone metal head. That's mm. how that's how you get the in, right? Always. Yeah. Wow. You know what's yeah. crazy about about your band? I was like, how did you because you're you're based out of Atlanta, right? I mean, if this kind of yeah, used where, to be. That's where we used we used to be. Like, that's where I used to live. That's where he lives. That's okay. Essentially, where we're from. Yeah. Okay. Cool. How do you go from being there to your first record? And how do you? What's the connection between that and Roadrunner? Okay. Because so, I, I remember seeing that as like a fan and a kid. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how do they get signed that fucking label? Holy shit! That was like that was a plan. That was uh that was a concerted effort. Mm. So I wanted to get signed to Roadrunner from the get-go. Like, that was... Nice. Yeah, it was... It seemed stupid, like, stupidly unrealistic, and I know that it's... I knew then that it was... It, but it, but the thing is, I like to take uh, unrealistic goals and figure out how to make them realistic mm. and uh, find, like, a yeah. logical path. Yeah. So I just kind of studied what is it that bands did that got signed to major labels, heavy bands. And in those days, they were, like, giving out CDs. Like, I heard that Disturbed gave out, like, 200,000 CDs, like, nice. that they printed themselves, for instance. Disturbed did that. Um, mm. And a few others, a few others. But I just found out that that's what they were doing. And I, like, I just did a lot of research on what labels were looking for and um, f- found my way to uh, who Monty Connors inner circle was money connor for people that know yeah like i uh, like he that's the dude that signed slipknot and uh if you don't know if you don't know yeah like basically i think him and brian slagle basically made modern metal uh with with a few other people but like i I consider money connor one of like the pillars of discovering metal bands but Hmm. i just kind of like found out who he listens to um and so i would Try to find that circle while at the same time giving out CDs um, and doing what those bands did that I heard about. So we printed up like 25,000 on our own and just gave them out like everywhere. Like I would fly to like London and go to like the parking lot of a Cannibal Corpse show with like a thousand CDs and just done. 
And Take that. Oh, he's not, yeah. he's not lying. I'm not lying. Dude, back Un- in the day, so in fucking it, real. we'd go to all the shows in Atlanta, and we would always see him outside passing out CDs. Always. Always, always, Without always. fail. Without yeah. fail. Ayo would always be outside the show with just passing CDs to everybody. So funny. Yeah. That's how, was, how I got in this band. <laughs> you fucking flew. Yeah. Just to pass out free CDs. Yeah. yeah. Also drove to like Maryland Death Fest in 04 to do that. Like it, it was, it, I mean, 25,000 is a lot. Um, Unbelievable, dude. But did you print it yourself? Yes. Uh, at home on the like. Yeah. I used to call them is, factories. I'd have like a first started like a, on a 2X burner. Then it went to like a 4X burner. Then I got like two 4X burners. <laughs> and I'd like, yeah, we'd have these like all night Adderall fests where we would just like burn and stamp, burn and stamp, burn and stamp. Slayers coming two weeks, like the next five nights. We need we need up boxes of Adderall yeah. stat <laughs> and CDs yeah, and, CD and CDs. Um, and yeah, and then uh, what sucks is you get rid of like 2,000 in like two minutes. And then, oh, shit. yeah, they just go. And it's a little. Do you have like, like a backpack yeah. full of them? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Just two people with backpacks, three people with backpacks. And God, remember? <sighs> yeah. Do you remember when two X, remember when 8X burners were the, you're like, oh my God, yeah. yeah. we have 8X now. That's right. <laughs> when CD burners right. came out, that was a game changer yeah. for, for yeah. bands that wanted to pass out their own yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Nero. Like 2X to 4X. Yeah. I, I remember people being like, uh, like how how uh, how did you yes. guys get signed or like how did you guys get the word out? It's like burn twenty five thousand. Yeah, CDs like that. Sh- yeah. Then like, shut the fuck I would, up. Yeah. I, would, I, would, I, would, I would I would tell them that. We also we did the other things though of like trying to always play out of town, like never play in town. So Another we never one. Whoa. You, so you know, so we wouldn't get looked at as like a local band. We always wanted people in town to think of us as a band that they could never see. Yeah. Like, so it would be a rare thing. So we almost never played in town. You don't want to be like the Masquerade Hell Band. No, we right. never sold, never sold <laughs> it's tickets. funny you know. Got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how many, I mean, I'm sure you've had tons of bands. Sean knows. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you guys have had tons of Atlanta locals uh, play your shows in, at the Masquerade. Um, I don't remember one of them. Exactly. And that's why we didn't want to do it. you don't want to be that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So the... I knew I didn't know anyone in the bigger bands, but I knew that if we sold tickets and took that slot, they would definitely I would keep on not knowing them, basically. So um so yeah, so that was basically the strategy. And also make good music. That that was kind of important too. Yeah, well that's a little bit of it. Yeah. And yeah. but then also I started a recording studio. And so mm-hmm. the idea with the studio was to try and record signed death metal bands. So that we could then tour with them. So that's how I met like Misery Index and Arsis. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Holy it like shit. it is like a multi prong. It was a multi pronged uh, uh, strategy. So when Roadrunner happened, it was like yeah, it's unrealistic, but not that unrealistic when you like break it down and go after it strategically, I guess. And um, it might have failed. But we had a, a prosthetic also offered us a deal, so mm. we had a good plan B. Um, so yeah, so it wasn't that crazy. Like if you were there, it wasn't that crazy. Well, maybe you're just like naturally wired like a fucking psycho. Yes, you know, which yep. is which is a main that that's that's your main <laughs> ingredient. Unfortunately, yeah. that's your yeah. main ingredient. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> no, for, no. for better for worse. No, no, no for yeah. sure you have like you have like the gift side of mm-hmm. it, but you have like this other side of that. You, to, to balance like 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 your inner inner psycho. It's well, weird. there's nobody. There's no bodies like under my house or anything. No, no, no. no but, but, but yeah, exactly. Well, you have to like um, what I've like. I don't think it's. I say it like um, joking around, mm-hmm. but I do think that um, in order to actually get shit done um, in this world, this world's a hostile place. It is, and the world doesn't want you to succeed. But anything that anyone's ever achieved, uh, there was a point in time when they didn't have that thing, right? So Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I look at it, too. There was a point in time where Slipknot was a local band or uh, whoever, whoever you're whoever has the something kind of like what you want to do. There was a point in time when they didn't have it. So obviously it's realistic to do in this world. So how did they do it? How is it done? So figure it out. That's amazing. 
I mean, weren't you strategic as fuck with Suicide Silence? It's That's true. Yeah. Kind of. I, I, you were more like, um, yeah, so, uh, I think we, we did touch on it like a little bit. Like you have like a, there is some kind of plan. Yeah, there, you're, that, you're the master plan you're, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you have like, okay, I'm going to do this and you do it. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're passing out CDs and flyers and you're just going all in, writing decent music. But, but you're outworking the other bands with your strategy and, uh, and, uh, and tactics, you know? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It, you got to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you ever known bands where there isn't someone who thinks like that? Um, no, I haven't. I, I have, but they don't usually go places. Well, yeah. But, yeah, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, yeah, among bands who go places, there's always one or two members that are psychotic about getting true. shit done. Like, it's true. It, it, it's, a, it's a prerequisite. So yeah. when, when I hear uh, shit talk about that band member, um, I never, I never like internalize it because, uh, cause usually it would be me, but like, yeah, <laughs> but that sick. person, but that personality is uh, required. It's like, it's it required. Is. Yeah. It's like, you know, how do you, you know, how do you be a musician from Austria? And then now you're here there, there is like that, like, how did you, how do you do that? Right. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. I mean, it was, it was a difficult thing to do. Austria is very small and, uh, we don't really have. A big metal scene. There's Belfigor, which is like the biggest Austrian metal band. But uh, for are me, they Austrian? They are, huh? They are Austrian. Oh, oh shit! I didn't know that. Neither. But um, yeah, the thing is, I actually started with uh, moving yeah. to Poland to play with Decapitated. So that was my first thing. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, decided I have to leave my country in order to make my dream come true. And um, yeah, just I uh, played there a couple of years with them and. So that was like the first step into the business and you, you do like a tour and an album. Mm -hmm. You just see everything for the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, then you make contact. And also, of course, social media because I, I was a YouTube drummer. So I'm just, that's easier. What? <laughs> so I was a YouTube drummer or I'm still I am. And so I was from the early year on YouTube and that was like the place for me to present myself. So even though I'm in Austria, in a small place, or in Poland, I would still have the whole world just to uh, show how I play. And, you know, then you meet more people, uh, we just follow along, and we just got in touch. I guess it was through the, the Bogren stuff. Through Bogren, yeah. Exactly, because I've worked with Jens Bogren before, uh, with my other band, Septic Flesh, mm. and then, um, you know, the URM Academy stuff, yeah. and so we could have started to talk. Yeah, we were going to do something that just never materialized, but... Uh, I was like, I remember telling you we should still like talk about doing something, anyways. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Bogren also told me that he's like the most pro drummer they've ever worked with. Oh, so that's, that, that's a reputation. I definitely take, I, I take, <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. No, no, I'm, no, 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 no. I don't know, man. I have to try to do my job good, you know. I, bet, yeah. I think I have the same mentality. Like, I want to get shit done. And for me, it wasn't an easy thing when I was, uh, a young kid, I just finished school and I was like, okay, I never lived abroad and especially in a country that I don't know the language. I know three people. And, um, but I was like, I have to do something in order to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And um, so I decided to do it and yeah, just work hard but consistent. You know, I don't want to destroy myself, but just be consistent and mm -hmm. uh, what, do one thing at a time and just follow one step at a time. And um, yeah, that's why I'm here. For a, for. <laughs> Like 15 Sick. years or longer. Yeah. Or longer, almost 20 years. When did your first YouTube video come out? I started 2007. So 2007, yeah. when YouTube was still yeah, a small yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Like Samus, you know, 6 yeah, Samus. Course. And uh, <clears throat> me, myself, like we, we did like some drum covers. And uh, that's where it all started. Yeah. Something as simple. That was Boom. simple, and I was like at the right time because nowadays YouTube is so full of amazing people, and the production yeah, is. quality is like yeah, insane. You, like you have to really step up your game so much more because in the past, literally, I recorded my drums with like three, my, four microphones, a kick, snare, two overheads. I would run it straight into a mixer. In this mixer, also the audio mm -hmm. goes straight into the camera. You know, no editing. <laughs> One shitty camera, push record, and put it on YouTube. Yeah, but I remember seeing your Demu Borgir cover from... Oh, shit, that'll, that'll do it. Yeah, from a long time ago. It, 
with you, a fucked you, up couch in the back. Everyone yeah. was coming <laughs> in. That, that couch, you know. You yeah, need a but, new couch. <laughs> but even then, like, how old were you? Um, I must have been like 18, something like this. I just finished school. Yeah, you, look, you look like a kid, but like, I was a kid. Yeah, that's the second picture there. It was. Oh, dude, how how tall are you there? My goodness. But it's like badass. A, a kid. But it's badass. Well, that that's the new. No, that's stuff. new. That's, that's the new one. But there used to be a because that's that's a different thing. But there was like from 2007, um, it was Prodigies, Prodigies of the Great Apocalypse. Of the Great Apocalypse. Exactly. That, that was the one. 2007. 2007. It must have been. And I I do play very yeah that's that's that, the small boy right here. Is, that's the small I played boy. very different here. Dude, what are you like twelve? <laughs> no, I always, look when I shave I always look like twelve. That's yeah. true. If you want you want you want to look younger. Just shave, but yeah, shave I, it here off. I was. Um, that was in my high school. So in the in the cellar. So it's sixteen years ago. It says. Sixteen years ago. Yeah, and um, you see it editing skills. And it got an intro. Fuck. Fuck, man. Oh, I tried. The, <laughs> you got the slate with the. You oh, see the couch. Oh, that that, that is the couch, oh, man. Yeah. You look like Joey. <laughs> of course, man. He 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 was my big idol. You look you like know. Joey, dude. <laughs> I learned just from the best. But yeah, that was it. Yeah, but you could tell even from that. Like you, you can tell. You, if you can't, you can tell raw talent. Yes, but actually, absolutely. You know, I also made a decapitated cover, and that was what that got it? got me into the band. You know, the decapitated cover, Invisible yeah. Control. I mean, I couldn't really play that song that well, but it just, I didn't give a shit. I just, you know, put it out. But because of that, I got contacted by Vogue, and he was like, yeah. How many views? Are you fucking serious? Well, but it's 16 years ago. Yeah, but still. That's a lot, dude. Yeah, I know, but still. Holy fuck. Fuck. So everything nine hundred nine. Wow. So everything started back then, you know, and just um. Yeah. Okay, so why did you keep the couch there? Uh, well, <laughs> I love the couch. That's why. Look at it. Why? Yes, you're I either never now when you look at the couch. new videos, you can see how far you've come with the new couch. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, Dude, I, once, once you get like a new couch, people are like, "Oh, we got a new couch. You made it." Yeah. Well, I've He's been making in, money playing drums. From the bottom, now we're here. Right? <laughs> well, you know, it was. Go fund me to get Krim a couch. <laughs> <laughs> but I found it funny how people always look. Like what shit they can find in the videos. Course, they man. just don't. They don't really care. I mean, okay, they care about your performance, but it's all those details. Like, what is that in the back? You know, yeah. like you don't even pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they care about. <laughs> they are paying attention to uh, everything. 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 But a couch was like, dude, please. You know, it's a band rehearsal space. <laughs> like, fuck it. I feel like the more raw it is, the more people notice things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. It, I think. In a good way, too. Yeah, and I think in an overall good way. It, there, I think there might have been a time period where Raw was bad. Um, but I think when? recent, maybe like five years ago, like wow. five years ago to, to like 10 years ago. But I think mm, nowadays anything Raw is good because people don't believe what they see online. True. They, they think everything's fake. So Especially with AI going. It's, it, things are getting yeah. fucked right now. Yeah, exactly. And with like playthrough videos where... You know, people just think everything's either sped up, mimed, just not real. Anything to make it raw. That's why uh, drummer from Leprous, Bard, uh, who he's is... He's amazing. He is amazing. Have you seen that mm -hmm. playthrough? He does, I forget what song, where he drops a stick. Um, it's in the middle of some crazy shit. And he drops a stick, and then he grabs another one. He keeps going. But he left that in. And I know that at some point in time, people would have cut that out. But I really love that he left that in because that's yeah, that's how we know sick. he's actually playing this. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. sick. But he's legit. But we, uh, but yeah, we know we, he's legit. We, that? we know he's legit because he dropped the stick. So we know that that's actually him in the video. What's the song? Uh shit. But honestly, I must say, from <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. You can look up uh, uh, Leopard's drummer's stick, stick drop. Okay, nice. Yeah. Once I saw him perform live, and he dropped both sticks accidentally, and he just kept playing with his hands. Oh, my <laughs> he's God. He's like that kind of guy. <laughs> That's sick. But, you know, he is 100% legit, and I believe as a drummer, I can always notice if someone fakes things or it's le it's a legit performance because the way it sounds and the movement, it matches up. You know, if, if, if uh, drums are being too sampled or too edited. True. That's not it. Yeah, you can. Um, I think it was like a. It's an older video. It's like a. A proper place. It's like right? a. Pr yeah, it's got and it's got a lot of views. It's maybe that one. Uh, this one, yeah, the moon one. Moon. Could it be that? But he was the thing is though with Bart, he used to perform on the street in Norway playing some yeah, dream theater right. covers. He was like, 
12 years old or something like wow. this. And mm-hmm. I would see his video and like, who is that guy? And um, he's a super funny guy. Um, he's a bit lost, but in a in a cool way. Like, <laughs> yeah. He loses his shit all the time, but he's so there focused he on drumming. Look oh, at that. that's shit. him. So I would watch that, and uh, you can that's tell crazy. the passion. You know, just drums, drums, drums. Dude, he brought his drums to the street. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, but lots of times street musicians are. Uh, yeah, no. but look at his cart that he brought his drums yeah. on. <laughs> that's that's dedication. I love this guy. That is yeah. that is your new trailer. <laughs> exactly. The camper right there. Come on. Man, stick that right behind the van. You guys are good. Man. He's like a super hyped dude, you know. That's sick. And um phenomenal drummer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's sick. Well, uh, congrats on uh I remember you so you you post a picture of you on a laptop. Actually the sugar free Red Bull was That's there right. was there as well. It got, it got this pe- one. people hyped. And, uh, yeah, and uh, you haven't. So you signed a metal blade, and what you ha- you didn't put out music for what twelve years? Yeah, twelve, thirteen years. Yeah, man. It's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. The whole thing we didn't ever expect to do again. Um, but it's one of those things where, like, you know, the very very first picture. I think yeah, the on, very first picture. I, I think it's on D- Daft's, uh, Daft. Yeah, yeah. But they're, they're very. You can fucking scroll. But boom, there it is. Yep. That's when started writing new material. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> we, we just liked it. Okay. Twenty twenty one. Wow. If you have a sugar free mm-hmm. rebel, you know this dude's working. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you know. You know shit is real. <laughs> yeah. Um. Honestly, I didn't expect anybody to give a shit, and um, I didn't like. I I'm not. I don't do things for fun because I'm psychotic. Like we already nice. established. Okay. But I, but I was, but I'm also not delusional. So mm. when I started doing that, I wasn't really thinking there's going to be a label like Metal Blade, like there's going to be a new lineup, there's going to be a record, there's going to be Jens Bogren, there's going to be all yeah. the sh- all the shit. Like it's just going to be back. Like uh, it wasn't that wasn't really. We were just going to do one song. Originally. Yeah, we're, yeah. It was yeah. like let's yeah. write a couple of songs, maybe like one or two, and then see how it goes. See, yeah, see, see how it goes. Go from there. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So no, yeah. So we did one, and then I pushed you to do another, and then I pushed you to do another, <laughs> and then you I'm said, glad we did, and then honestly. you said, and then you said maximum three. <laughs> so <laughs> look, we have a full out. There's like, yeah, yeah, but you know, Metal Blade, they're really do interested. Four, and then we could do five. We may I mean, just we'll, do six. I mean, we could just probably put twelve on there. Well, then I hate, <laughs> I hate odd numbers, so we may as well do. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight, and then. But yeah, we did the three. We did the three. No rest, no end, which is the first single that came out, is like part of that batch. Um, we did the three, and we just had this agreement of if it goes well, we'll finish the album and go from oh. there. So we didn't really define the criteria of what if it goes well means. Um, huh. We just said if it goes well, uh, so open ended because you know he's got septic flesh. Yeah, like we've all got lives. Um, it's a it's a big ask. Um, but, you know, I guess Metal Blade coming into the picture and stuff means it went well. Yeah, so, it definitely yeah. was the thing like, okay, yeah. so we got to do the album, right? Yeah, yeah now we got to do the other six. <laughs> yeah, true. So is that, is that the, is there a, is that the a plan? Yeah, album right. comes out in May. Really? Yeah. Oh, hey, hold on, I'm sorry. It's done, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, re- re- real quick, just advice, don't send someone a Wii transfer file. Okay. Okay. Because you can't play the fucking files. Oh, that's right. So I, I haven't heard the uh, record. It's actually, I haven't heard it and it completely forgot in my brain. Because I'm used to Dropbox. Well, yeah. I can send you Dropbox. Okay. I just want, I just want to lay, okay, now now we, we can <laughs> move on. Cause, <laughs> Never use Wii Transfer. No, because no, I, I like uh, waking up day of and just putting on like whatever I, new record or like the Spotify just goes straight down and I was driving. Nice. It's like five. It's like five six a.m. You see the sun. Like I, I, the vibes coming up. I'm like, okay, blast beats. And then I want, I, I want, I want to hear this. You cannot. You will definitely be awake afterwards. You can't I can file. I'm like, oh, don't fuck the fucking weed transfer file. Come on, dude. Come on. Oh, it's some. You are Come fucking, on, dude. You should, come on. You should fucking know better. That's actually the reason. <laughs> the reason I do weed transfer is because of uh, Dropbox and Google Drive failing so often. Really? Yeah, yeah. They they go down a lot. Um, so yeah, for when huh. you're dealing with like huge transfers and stuff, 
uh, shit can get finicky. Uh, the, we transfer. The only reason I use it is because it's the only way that I can actually know that someone got it. Um, well, it's usually a wave, and you typically have to unzip it. So it's like it's it's, it's a pain in the ass. It, Fuck yeah. yeah. It's just with the other ones, I don't know that the person got it. What is the easiest way to send someone a record? Well, for what what are they going to do with it? Like if if they were going to listen on their phone, mm -hmm. like yeah. in your scenario, I think Dropbox. Yeah. Is uh yeah, you put it on Dropbox and you have a password that they can password. Yeah, password but, to access it. Yeah. But, but what can actually wait, uh, I'm actually going to contradict my myself. One, what is what do you think is going to happen with with the record, right? Like, and also, like, I think people are may, might be done leaking stuff, but then I just had a memory. No, no, no. I, I no, record. I don't mean in that way. I mean more like uh, if you have like say um, seven different versions, like we do, and you okay. send and <laughs> yes. you and you send them version four. Yeah. Uh, you want to make sure that like if they then share it, that they're at least sharing the correct version. Mm. Um. It's like a known thing that the right, that stuff's going to get shared, but I wouldn't want um, the wrong mix to be what like goes around. So sure, at least share the right thing. Yeah. So I think that putting the password on there, um, that way you can limit the access to the older versions. And, Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and keep everything up to date, so it prevents versioning errors. That's that's what it is. Can you put like a like a, a timeline? Like this, this will expire in a week. Yep. Or, yep. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. You didn't do that, right? Not, no. <laughs> <laughs> what am I no, to I just wanted to give it to you. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Yeah, I just gave it to you. Okay. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe I should have been more clear. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll let's do this like the of. And just fucking go to gym and just jam it. Yeah. No, I just sent it to you with no no password, no expiration. Well, there is an expiration that's built in. Hmm. Um, I just gave it to you. No no holds no, uh, yeah, no, no restrictions. You were no good, restrictions. Yeah. Should have completed that. Yeah, no you're cl cleared. Do you think leaking is coming back? Um, what does it even mean? Where are you anymore? leaking it to, though? Yeah, that like matters. what? Yeah. There's like, one place you could leak it to, uh, which YouTube? I won't say. No, but there is a website you can download any record that comes out because they leak it. Um, That's still going on. It still goes. So on. you My know what, gets all his records. You know, you, know, you know what happens that I've seen lately? Producers get hit up by people pretending to be in the label. That's what I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> yes. So that oh, really? that is fucked up. I didn't hear about like, that. I'm, mm. I'm not worried about me sending you something and hopefully you thinking it's sick and you showing somebody else in some other band or in your band. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Or like me sending it to somebody else, they show it to somebody else. Cool. Yeah. That's And then it's out there. That's fine. But uh, what this thing that we're talking about is people will pose as a friend or as an employee of the management company or the label mm -hmm. or working for the band, mm -hmm. you'll hit up the producer and be like, I didn't get the files. That's and funny. it'll look real. It'll look it looks real. real. It looks totally real. Um, I've had, I know several producers who have been duped by this. And uh, So some had got, got yeah. duped. Yeah. And Fuck. when it's like a huge band, when it's a huge band and we're talking about like six figure budgets and stuff like that. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. How do they? So I'm curious. How do they? These people know because it, it freaks me out because this is very extreme inner circle stuff. How do you know the, the producer? How do they know? Uh, they know who's mastering it, and like the band knows, and maybe people at the label know. And when people are hitting up people that did our masters mm -hmm. for a record, I'm like, how did? How does someone in the outside someone know? Someone talks. Yeah, I, exactly. I, so I, it's I, just someone talks. Yeah. I just had an experience. Um, Let's hear it. Yeah, you know, the, with the guitars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't mind talking about it because okay. obviously it's out there, right, somehow. So um, we are just at the NAMM show, and uh, I was walking around and walked past the booth. And th this relates to what you're talking about of okay. how word gets out. Um, so walked past the booth, did a double take, um, and was like, what am I looking at? And... What I was looking at was stolen versions of my girlfriend's guitars. Yes, right there. So um, she paints for the Fender Custom Shop, and uh, these are like commission guitars. Um, you know, they're they're purchased by these are the fakes, but they're uh, the ones she does are like commissioned straight by the Fender Custom Shop. They're not commissioned by individuals, mm -hmm. and then they go to like dealerships or to like 
really, really rich buyers or whoever buys those like really, really expensive Fender Custom Shop ones. And these are all like one-offs, one-off hand-painted. Um, and so I saw her designs out of the side, of, side view and uh, was going to show her. I saw some, but then when I looked, I realized those aren't Fenders. And the art looks shitty. Um, and then I looked a little more and I noticed three of her designs there. Three? Three, yeah. They had three. So um, I, did a, I did a story with a little slideshow of the three. But um, anyways, uh, word got out, I guess. Uh, I guess the slideshow's gone. But uh, yeah, it's actually on my Facebook page, on my on my personal Facebook. But anyway, point being, we're, like they did three. I put them on blast. And today I got a DM from a company uh, saying, we apologize for stealing your girlfriend's artwork. We have removed the guitars. We would like to pay for your and your girlfriend's upcoming trip to Japan. It's like... How you know I'm going to Japan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where they find? So whoever told them about your mastering told them I'm going to Japan yeah, exactly. too. It's that same <laughs> yeah. person. It's that same person. <laughs> Just in the industry. It's a deep spin. Yeah. Yeah. We're obviously in LA. Yeah. Someone, someone here. <laughs> Is it you? <laughs> yeah, that's dude, why I have it's, podcasts. Yeah, yeah, I, know, I know what's fucking, going on. It's fucking dude. creepy though, right? <laughs> so are we going to go there and get killed? I don't know. That's yeah, worth a shot. I mean, yeah. How do they? How do they know? Like, right? How can you get the artwork like that? I don't know. Uh, I think. Oh well. How did they get it? How, the, how, how do you get that? You just copy it. You just copy it. What I find more it. crazy is how do they how, know that he goes wants to go to Japan? Yeah, that's what the crazy. Because you didn't post about no, it. No, no. It's it's this, this trip. Did this, you click that link in your email? You did. Yeah, <laughs> they're in your. So computer. like, what what's going on? Like, who are these people? Yeah. Like, some like. Okay, it's, so this is a company that's from Japan, correct? No, so I don't know where, where they're from. So where? Okay, Probably China. China. Okay, so where's yeah, this the, guitar company from? Uh, Taiwan. 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 But like, when you oh. click on their, when you try to find them online, it goes to a fake website. Like that doesn't look like a real company, right? No. Yeah, you have one no. post. They're like, we they have one, one post. guitar. Yeah, it's <laughs> sketchy. Yeah, anarchy, of course. <laughs> sketchy, right? And yeah. and they're at Nam selling yeah. guitars. There were a lot of there were a lot of guitars, but they had like EVHs, yeah, actually, yeah. EVH models there. It's like you don't have an EVH license. Like, no way you have. This a, is this is freaky shit, dude. Yeah, and so how do they know I'm going to Japan? Like. So what's going how on? How do they know that? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's what I. That's okay. I had. If, if you, uh, well, how do people find this shit out? Like same with like what you're talking about with the, with the mastering it's stuff. Just, like, it, it's extreme, inner circle stuff. Like, yeah. The only people that know are like maybe a couple of people at the label that know who's mastering the fucking record. Yeah. How how do they and, I don't. Who's know. the rat? Yeah. And if they know like your personal mm -hmm. travel. Okay, so I, I have a theory. All right. Uh, I, I, th I thought about this when I was high. I <laughs> I'll, so it's probably right. Yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah, a groundbreaking yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> moment. I, I get sketched out by putting my ideas in the notepad. Because now it's, now yeah, it's, yeah. now people, because I'm well aware that people know what I type. Yeah. Uh, especially when you have TikTok or Instagram. Yeah. It's very, it's very, it's known around the world that uh, now you're, the, the way, how you, press your finger on the screen is tracked. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm like, okay, if I'm putting my ideas down there, someone can see this. Hey, if you have TikTok on your phone, though, that could also be a lot of it because it, you give them permission. A lot, like, didn't you, don't you remember that? They were trying to ban it? Yeah. Because they were, you were giving them permission to look at everything on your phone. Sure. So that's, if you have it, that's a red flag. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Is I'm thinking, Mike, if I put these, I'm, I actually stopped putting so many of my ideas on there, and now I go straight straight to paper. I, I yeah, it's a paper, old school. Yeah, it's just nice. like uh, just ideas, like you know, for the pod or a song or like uh, just any idea you have. I kind of st I stopped putting it in, in the notepad because because it's kind of known for it's known. As, this is a perfect example. I've, I haven't thought about this in a while. Where. <laughs> I, I uh, like that. People, <laughs> oh my yeah. god! Yeah. I, yeah. I need I, I need that. Tin foil hats, baby. People in a different country 
will steal your idea because yep. they're probably, they have the access, they're probably the ones that have the access to the way you're typing. Of course. It's freaky. Yeah, of course. It's uh, yeah, key logging. It's there's 100%. no such thing as privacy. No, that's, online. that is yeah. long gone. So dude. if you want it analog, like you're doing, and also that's actually better. Mm -hmm. There's lots of studies show that actually writing stuff down is better for um, learning and remembering. Learning so, and retention. Yeah. yeah. Dude, but did you ever suffer stuff. with that when you're writing? I know I do because I never write anymore. That when I write, I always like put letters ahead because I'm like my brain is so much faster yes. and I'm used to texting it. That when I write, I like put letters out of place. I'm like, damn it, rewrite that word again. Sure. <laughs> Happens so much. Yeah, I, I think I think it's good for your creative uh, brain too. Like, uh, it's. Because because with the phone it's too it's too finished too quick. Where if you're writing something, it's just like it may, you're kind of like you're able to like kind of sketch it out. You it will, yeah. okay with it. Okay, this word's wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spell it and cross it off. Yeah, you kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. under there's something I I don't know what it is. I really I really don't know. Yeah. But something happens when you just write write shit down. Yeah, I mean, bite like dance is like one of the, the yeah. biggest defenders of that. By the way, so I mean, I have it. We all have it. I'm sure you know TikTok, but you know, that was I don't have it. That was a huge yeah. thing. They were like, they're basically key logging. Yeah, and they're listening to you. I mean, like Instagram and Facebook, they're all yeah. listening to your mic. I mean, yeah, you mm -hmm. give them all access to that. But, you know, when your data gets leaked or, you know, something like that, that's where they get a lot of that from. And especially these days, I, I get these, you know, I'm sure we all do, living in America, we get these mm -hmm. sketchy USPS, your packages, you know, are ready. Oh, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, plus, yeah. you know, four, eight. You're like, <laughs> but we get, <laughs> okay. we have the same in, in Europe. I get all the time scam calls and like, yeah, pick up your package here. Yeah. You know, your tracking number is blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I didn't order I'm anything. I'm not. I'm not ordering anything. I'm like, what I'm. What I supposed to, you know, oh, dude, pick they, up. They got me. So, and I'm. I am good. I am a you tech person. Um, I I always double, triple, quadruple check like my emails, any websites that people send me, and I got a text message, and I was expecting a package from somebody, and oh, it says, "Hey, no. we need to update your shipping information because something's wrong," and I know the person who sent it where I live. Uh, there's a nine or a four at the end of my zip code. So it just really depends on where it's going. But it, it uh, the official puts a nine, but when I write it to someone, it's a four. So sometimes it can be a mess. So mm -hmm. I click the link, it sends me to the USPS website, and I put in my information. It wants me to pay a 30 cent fee. So I put my credit card in. Oy. And then the next day, the next day, oh, Sean, the next day. Wow, they got you. Two thousand dollars charged to my credit card. What right? the Someone fuck? paying their power bill in North Carolina. Oh. Yeah, I was like, power, power, power. I'm like, whatever. Wow. So um, it happens again, except I mean, because the website looks legit. It is a. It's go. It even like the first. You know, the prefix of everything is legit. It's all the the suffix at the end. That's like zero one question mark Q. You know, after the the forward slash. Um, wow. It all looks I'm legit, amazed. like USB.gov. But then, so this time it happened again. I'm like, let me see if I can click other things. So <laughs> I scroll down to like the ask us about us. All leads to dead links. Oh, so that's the no. trick now. That's the trick. If you ever get that and you go to the website, always click around on all the links at the bottom, the hyperlinks, and see if it leads to a real, real site. Because they got me, <laughs> but they won't again. <laughs> can you? Uh, can your bank get that money back? Yeah, it was a credit card. So uh, they just they had it in two seconds. It wasn't. Oh, really? A debit oh, card, obviously. That no, takes yeah, like you, two weeks. You can still get that back, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ask, ask me how I know. Yeah, yeah. Debit card is like, <laughs> yeah, debit card is like two weeks, still get but it. credit yeah. card, it's instant. They just write it off, and they're like, whatever. We'll fix it, yeah. This is a thing. North, yeah, North there it is, Carolina. Yeah. There it is, yeah. North, delivery failure notification. Yeah, and uh, that's an email, but like when it comes through as a text, that's when it was like, oh, because I always get text of like, you have a package at the front office. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, let me go pick it up. So you can just, you're in like an autopilot mode, and you don't think, and... They got me, man. Plus, you were expecting something. So I was. No, I was actually expecting something to come like tomorrow or the next day. So I was yeah. like, oh, shoot, they're holding it. It may have been delivered. Let me just make sure I adjust my... And all I did was change the zip code to the four instead of the nine. And yeah, yeah. two grand later. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, with the, with that's, that, that's how people get you. It's like uh, it's when like you're just on kind of... Autopilot, you're on their phone, kind of scrolling. Yeah, oh, yep. I'm do this. You yeah, look at this. That's yeah. how See, that looks legit. But that's not what mine looked like. But it was very similar to that. Yeah, it looks legit. You're like, it oh looks shoot, legit. UPS. Oh damn, my tracking number. Oh damn, that's mine. I should fix that. Oh shit, I, I really want this package. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but Fuck. they will never do that. Obviously, I've learned that that, that um, they'll never text you to change your information ever. 
They would just oh, hold the package. Yeah, you'll never get a text from the post office, from UPS, from Amazon. Never. They'll just contact you through your account, and they won't even email you. They'll actually try to call you. Is what they'll happen. So what learn. Happen. We can learn all yeah. from your situation yeah, right yeah. now. I'm giving, trying to teach you. Exactly. Yeah. Giving us <laughs> so don't make my mistake. Always Mind click blown. the damn hyperlinks at the bottom. Like, click the contact us and see if it leads to a real page. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. sharing this Thank information. You, Sean. Yeah. Thank you. You're yes. welcome. So first tour back is going to hit North North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucked up, dude. Yeah, that right, is fucked yeah. up. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it's been bugging me. What, what does your shirt say? Uh, Twilight Sad. What's that? It's a uh, Scottish band that I saw open for The Cure. Oh, oh shit, you serious? Awesome. Yeah. What's it called? The Twilight Sad. Twilight Sad, dude. If it's a new band, you, I, I, got, I, I got to hear it. Okay. Got to trick it out. Twi... Were they sick or what? Yeah. Uh, good enough for me to get the shirt. If, if, if you bought the fucking, what, the, the, the $30 shirt, it's, yeah. it's, pro it's probably... Okay, The Twilight Sad. Okay. So they open up for The Cure. Yeah, is, is it is it kind of that like style or what? Yeah, kind of in that like nice. Uh, yeah, when you're like, depressed, you gotta listen yeah. to the Cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it helps. <laughs> Sometimes you, like you don't get like a certain band or music, but if you're in the mood, like you, let's say you get dumped or something, it all makes sense. it all makes sense. Yeah, you're like oh, dude, when, when I when I uh, yep, when, does. when me and my chick broke up, Coldplay made a lot of sense, <laughs> and I was jamming that shit for a long time. I thought this best band in the world. Oh shoot, that's that's a nice guitar. Yeah, I heard some quote. It was like, uh, "Lyrics are are great when they mean nothing, but when they mean something, you know, they definitely hit home." Like, and it's like in that moment where, like, you're just listening to, you're like, "Ah, whatever, this song is great," but then when it when it hits that moment, you're like, "This is oh, everything fuck. I've been thinking for the. <laughs> this is the answer." Yeah. It's kind of a trip that hopefully you never feel that way about brutal death metal lyrics. Yeah, like old like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. corpse. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully those never hit home for you. <laughs> this next song, <laughs> it's out all the women. Out there. <laughs> it is kind of funny how we don't we don't care about like, like we don't care about death metal lyrics. Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's brutal. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, whatever. It, it's not serious. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, it's like yeah. serious music, but it's not. It's not a manifesto. It's just art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, humans are drawn to there just the fantasy. Yeah. yeah, we don't have to say the name, but yeah. <laughs> Track one, baby. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I think that's from Tomb of the Mutilated, actually. Great record. Great record. <laughs> oh, sick. I mean, I mean, I mean, humans are just naturally drawn to fantasy. Yeah, totally. You know? totally. It's cool. It's, 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 there's, a, there, there's a positive in that. Whereas even Death Metal is a perfect example. Like, you have, like, these lyrics. It's obviously not serious. But there's, like, the fantasy element to it, but... This makes you feel good. It's crazy. Yeah. I yeah. think with death metal, for me, um, it's not so much what the lyrics are, because mm -hmm. I, I kind of almost don't care with death sure. metal. It's more just like how it sounds, like exactly. rhythmically. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's the like, cadence. it's just a feel. It's, yeah. a, it's a vibe. Yeah, but also, though, it is good if the song is heavy to be able to belt out that just like, fuck <laughs> you. I mean, come on. Sure. Fucking, uh, what is it? Fuck everything? Dude, come mm -hmm. on. It's great to scream. Fuck, man. Especially in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah. Say it with me. Fuck everything. You know, you're like, ah, hardest, see, so that works. Hardest to come up with. Those, yeah. those stupid, simple yeah. stuff. With, uh, dude, your, your journey of going into, like, production and audio has been re really fascinating to, to see. And, your, and the idea of, like, nail the mix to give people access, which I'm sure was a fucking hassle. All that was like behind the scenes stuff, I'm sure. Trying to get like- That's most of it. Trying to get the tracks, you know? Yeah, what? dude. So, um, Nail the Mix is uh, another one of those things that uh, seemed really unrealistic to mm -hmm. pull off. Like, to think, you know, we're gonna get uh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that yeah. guy. I know that guy. I know that guy. Yeah, like, it's, it's, like, it's the that, same jacket. <laughs> just, just, I love this jacket. Just to think that any, any, of, uh, any of those artists, I mean, we've had you guys on mm -hmm. a few times. We had Septic Flesh on. Like, right. at first, um, it was like, uh, oh, and Gojira. Like, it just seems super unrealistic that anyone would be cool with uh, True. allowing that. Um, yeah. Just because, you know, remember speaking about leaks and w the era that we come from, True. that 
it just seemed like no one would ever be cool with it. Um, so the fact that it was allowed to happen in the first place was a miracle. Mm. Um, and the fact that it's continued to happen is uh, is a miracle. But I think that we've made the case uh, for why it's not hurting. It's not mm. hurting anybody. It's not hurting yeah. any of the artists. So, you know, like True. we're paying license fees, first of all. But second of all, like our community members aren't allowed to do anything with those tracks. So even if you're downloading Opeth, like their actual tracks and doing mixes, you can't just post it on your own site and be like, I mixed Opeth. Yeah. <laughs> come come record with me. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm Opeth's mixer. Yeah. Like that's again, you yeah, get those weird little, weird little like things to like, you know, navigate. I'm sure it's like, oh shit. Yeah, how do you navigate this? Well, there's, I mean, obviously, there will be, like, you know, Russian sites that will just, like, steal everything and put it up. And, of course. But, like, people are, uh, artists and labels are understanding of that because they know that, like, the amount of piracy that comes from there. But mm -hmm. we're really, really serious within the community that if someone breaks those rules, um, like, it's a sacred thing that we don't fuck around with people's tracks. So yeah. if someone posts them outside of the community like do their own mix, post it on YouTube. It's like, I've mixed Suicide Silence, they get banned. And the thing mm. is our community self polices because we made it basically really clear that the, the, it's kind of an honor that we're allowed to use tracks by so many great bands. Yeah. Um, and the only reason it's allowed to continue is because um, we don't have a track record of doing fucked up things with those tracks. Mm -hmm. um, if we did, the shit would go away. So, and we let the community know that. And so whenever someone violates it, I get like 500 DMs or emails of people like uh, directing us to the to the post or whatever. Whoa. Like it happens fast. It happens really, really fast. And then, yeah, you just get the shit taken down. Andrew Wade. But, but yeah, like <laughs> the thing with Nail the Mix though was, uh, have you ever been into production? Chris? Mm, no, like, just like logic, trying to get tone. Mark's more the dude in your band, right? Yeah. Okay, so like I, I think that um, there's a lot of metal musicians, and there have been for like the past 15 years, who like want to record to some level. Some mm -hmm. want to do it for a living. Some just want their own music to sound better, mm -hmm. you know, everything in between. But back in the day, if you went to look for information on how to do it, there was literally zero, like nothing. Like you could find shit for any other genre you could go to school for any other genre but for metal there's like literally nothing it's, it's true yeah and the metal producers like the old guard were like guarding that shit like the cia or something yeah yeah like it, <laughs> my tracks <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so um i just figured like look this uh this home recording thing is only going to get bigger it's not going to get smaller True. More and more musicians are going to get into this. More and more producers are coming in. If we don't want the next generation of metal to sound like fucking shit, someone's got to help them. Mm. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's where it came from. And we figured it's better if you have the people who actually made the records that you listen to showing how to do it than some rando like who is like guessing. Like if you want to know what's happening on an Opeth record, or in a sugar record. Yeah. Why don't you hear it from the dude who mixed it with those actual tracks? Hmm. Um, it's a it's it's a crazy thing though that it even happened. But uh, yeah, it happened. The thing though that I keep like telling myself is how bad are we spoiling people or asking myself? Because like, can you, you imagine being a producer or just a beginner? Mm -hmm. Like you want to learn. And uh, you're like, oh, I'm just going to download Devin Townsend, go to Nail Mix and get like Devin Townsend tracks and Suicide Silence tracks and Meshuga tracks and uh, like whatever. And like, this is what you're working with now. Mm -hmm. And then you go work with local bands and it's not mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> it's uh, so <laughs> it's, it's uh, a I'm, like I worry about spoiling people sometimes oh. because like that's not reality. Like. You're not you. Yeah. You work a long time before you can work with bands that good, and you have to sure. learn how to solve problems with bands that are not that good. Was, so was this you in year two thousand? What year? What? Yeah, Mutt they, they, they were. And, and, and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mutt Lang! Oh shit, dude, that's fucking legendary, dude. That is is that 
Shania Twain. Is it? I can't tell. Yeah. If it is, good eye. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, he. Weren't they married? Were they? I have no idea. Yeah, they were married. Oh, well, there's another fun fact that you knew I didn't. He produced her, then married her. And not, not anymore. Isn't it a trip to hear the tracks and like you're like, oh wow, they are. That's why they're that that band. They are that good. Yes. Well, no, not a trip. Like mm. more like a confirmation. Mm. Like when you hear like a Gojira track. Actually, the best example is Meshuga. Like, because we did Destroy, Erase, Improve. Oh, my God. It's 23 tracks. 23 tracks. Um, uh, what's the song called, the opening? Future Breed Machine. Future Breed Machine, that's right. We did Future Breed Machine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 20, it. it's 23 tracks, all tracked analog. It's like one drum set. Yeah. Like yeah. one metal <laughs> drum set is <laughs> that much. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's But you play it, and it's like, oh, all right. They sound like this. The, that's what they sound like. Uh, oh. It's. Have you ever been in the room with this really great musician, and they sound exactly like what you know them to sound like, and but like playing through like some shitty practice amp? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, all right. They. That's what they actually sound they like. Actually, yeah, they. Just, they're like, yeah, they're like, they're like. It's eighty-five percent them. Yeah, right? yeah. It's crazy. It's like the hands, the, their brains, just. I did actually watch this just because I love that song. <laughs> the whole album is phenomenal. Oh, it's one of my favorite. Absolutely. It's my favorite band. <laughs> I don't, out of curiosity, what, what do you think are like the top five like best metal mixes? Ooh. Let's go around, dude. Tough. That's tough. Yeah. That's Ooh. tough because there's so many great ones. Um, the, uh, I think, um, Ghost Reveries album mm, interesting uh, i think a lot of people think that the watershed mix is better but i don't know i think the ghost reveries mix um i think uh what was europe you you, you come off as like an opeth guy yes i love opeth okay but um but also i've heard mixes and i don't remember the names of so i, I more think okay. of like who i think are great mixers mm, uh, okay. so like Got i it. think buster odahome is like the next generation of Buster's kill. Yeah, dude. Buster's like Buster's the future. Um, I think uh, there was a time period. See, you have to think about in context of the time because production standards have changed. So if you go back to like the early 2000s, you listen to like the impossibility of reason, like with Colin Richardson mixing, mm. like that is like the pinnacle. It is of what was impossibility. Dude, it is. sounds incredible. That's the pinnacle of what. Could be done in I'm surprised 2003. You, I'm, I'm surprised you don't hate that band. Why? I'm, I'm kidding. It's fine. Because they, <laughs> <'cause laughs> they stole. Because they stole my band. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't bring it up. <laughs> no, oh no, God. that, that but whole story. Right. That, that whole story is funny. Hey, that, that was great, though. That, that you, helped so much, man. Yeah. I mean, come on, it kept kept us going pretty much. Yeah. But you're right. That makes this is like, I mean, if if, you, if there was an era, if it was touched by by Colin, it was just like you knew. It was going to sound sick as fuck. Yeah. You knew exactly totally. what it was going to sound like. And you, you wanted that sound. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd say Impossibility of Reason, Ghost Reveries. Wow, that's up there? Damn. Yes. Wow, that's on your list. He's that's just there. asking about mixes. No, yeah. I know. I just yeah. didn't realize that that was on that's your cool. list. That's cool, yeah. Obviously, Black Album. What do you think about Stabbing the Drama? That was one of my favorite mixes. Uh, Soil I, work. I'm Like, it's great, but it's... I mean, it's, it's very great. specific. I yeah, feel it's like. very specific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like think the way the yeah, drums I think that there's like uh, I'm in the at the gates contingent. There's like I feel like there's three contingents of like fans of the uh, Swedish melodic death metal from the '90s. There's the Inflames contingent, the yeah. at the gates mm -hmm. contingent, and Soul Work contingent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the at the gates contingent. So for Got me, um, the Frederick Nordstrom at the gates stuff is like the pinnacle mm. oh sure. you ma imagine fucking being in the room and recording the black album dude Fuck. imagine i that. felt like i was with those with those movies they put out i love it when yeah. it's so like yeah. raw and behind the scenes stuff dude. i love that shit dude dude you want to talk about balls metallica have the biggest balls they do out of anybody like Putting I, out some kind of monster, like, I will hundred percent agree. They ha they are fearless. Like they are not afraid to, and I think that's part of why they have remained so big. Is 
whether or not people like their new stuff, like they're so willing to be, uh, to just show the truth, whether it's ugly, whether mm -hmm. it's embarrassing, whether it's awesome, like it doesn't matter. Like just the balls to put out some kind of monster. <laughs> dude, it's dude. like, wow. There's some seeds I was laughing dude, at. There, <laughs> it's seriously, I but it. I love it. I loved it. it. I love it. <laughs> just putting down Lars or Lars. Or the, I just <laughs> putting down James. It sounds so stuck to my ears. <laughs> yeah, because when you do that, that, that like in the room bickering with, with, with your band, it's kind of hard to be an outsider, but I'm pretty sure if there's an outsider, it'll look really and sound really bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When there's like that in the room bickering. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's yeah. like, dude, yeah, that's they're, the one they're, I'm they're, talking yeah, about. Yeah. Talk to my ears. <laughs> Which part do you think is that clear? It sounds in my ears. <laughs> it's, have you seen it recently? No. It's been a while, man. You should watch it again. Yeah. Probably like two years. No, okay, so that's recently. It came that's out. recently yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, you're seeing them in their worst moment, but also in now that it's been 20 years or whatever, seeing this, it's like, wow, this, love, this is why they're so huge. Like, I love that Lars, though, balls. in this is like complaining about riffs being too stock. And it's like, bro, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. That's, dude, that's one of my favorite beats. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I just want to put a drop eight chug on there, dude. Yeah. I, I love, drop I love his drum beats. <laughs> yeah, that what, what a record. Holy shit, dude. I was straight up with you and I told you I'm in a shit mood and what have you been doing? <laughs> picking at me all night. <laughs> I love it. So good. That's what I say to Eddie. Let's watch it right now. <laughs> let's stop the yeah. podcast and just watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that looks very familiar. I love he slams the door. It's like, so yeah. dramatic. So how do you, how oh. do you distract a bunch of metalheads? Is just... Oh, watch some kind of monster. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's so like, relatable. Right. It's so relatable. And, and, and when Lars's dad tells them to burn the record or yeah, delete it, or whatever, it, should yeah. <laughs> it should be deleted. Oh, dude, sway! I would delete Jeez, that. Jeez, I forgot about sway. And it's all it's also great that uh, so in in 1999 you were so you were ready to like, like to leave metal, correct? Yes. And then you heard the first Slipknot. Yes, that's correct. Um, what, so, 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 what was it about that record that kind of just brought you back? I mean, back. I mean, you're fucking. Well, I here. started. Um, I was doing like, I mean, we're talking about a long time ago, but yeah. um, I was writing death metal in high school. Actually, some of the stuff on the Hinders album were death metal songs I wrote in high school. But serious? Yeah. But oh, then shit. I started going into orchestral composition and thought that that's what I was going to do, mm -hmm. and just wasn't going to do metal anymore. And uh, it was kind of like uninspiring to me in the late nineties. And, um, but I decided I needed to learn some modern stuff just so that I would keep my guitar playing modern. Mm -hmm. And I had like, I had that perception of new metal bands that dudes from death metal had that were like those fucking new metal bands. I'm going to just, <laughs> who's this slipknot band? I'm just going to learn some of this new, new metal shit. And, uh, you heard the first song and it's just like roaring. That first, that opening song is just so awesome. Yeah, it's insane. It's like so much energy. It just exploded. And it was just like, this is what I've wanted metal to be. Like, mm. this is what's been missing from metal. So, yeah, as soon as I heard it, it was like, oh, yeah, metal is fucking awesome. Just no one's been making it fucking awesome for a while. So, um, yeah, that album was definitely yeah. groundbreaking. Yeah. I remember going to the, to the record store and I would just listen to the first song. And I was That's like, it, you're hooked. I was hooked. I was not yet a metalhead yet, but I think that album changed my mind. So I was like, yeah. that's a weird album cover. I've been checking it so out. That's how you used uh, to buy uh, albums was yeah. that way. Yeah. 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 I saw them at like OzFest yeah. 99 same. and they were like the side stage yeah, yeah, thing. Same. It was like, what is the this? Small, yeah, they, yeah, well, they sick. played West Palm. So I, uh, I actually found the video of somebody uh, and I saw myself in the video in uh, OzFest 99. Like you can see me Seriously? from the back of the head. Yeah. Whoa. And uh, I remember when, because the album wasn't out when they played OzFest. Yeah, I would have loved yeah, yeah, yeah. I got like the Roadrunner sampler yeah, that, with like Fear Factory that and video. like two songs yeah, of Slipknot. Oh I was waiting for that. Right I would have loved to see them during that no, time. No, yeah, yeah. That, this first was the, time I saw them, two thousand two. That's when they came over to Austria yeah. the first time. But I would have loved to see them. Imagine following them on stage back then. Oof. Oh my god! I think like uh, Snot was after them. Like it was either Snot or it was uh, System or it was like Head PE. I mean, was literally after Slipknot on that side stage. It just seems like it would be really demoralizing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that would make you want to. And not a lot of people <laughs> moshed. I remember everyone just stood and stared. That's, yeah, that's no, one it thing was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. 
He's like, what or, is going like, on? People didn't know how to like react to it at first. What yeah. is happening? That is so funny. Yeah, there's a there's a point in this video you can actually see my head from the back, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm actually standing in this crowd. That first record is literally Ross Robinson's masterpiece. Yeah. That's like, I agree. It's just like it's just a yeah. masterpiece. Yeah. It, it's the whole the the mystique about what he did with bands. I feel mm -hmm. like that is the pinnacle of it, and you can see it in like some of the. Clips they have of the making of. Yeah, like you just go um, for like five second clips. Yeah. Everyone like, it pops up. I like, yeah. oh, damn. So I'm fun. looking for everything I can find out about like recording sessions from Iowa and the first album. It's like there's nothing. Whenever there yeah. there's so little snippets out there, but I yeah. always look for like what did they do back then. He got those techniques oh, wait, wait, from wait, his, wait, uh, his wait, mom. Wait, wait, stop. I think that's me. Wait, wait, go back on the right-hand side. Oh, you're, you're actually on, on there? Yeah. You know, I, I told you. I was at this show. Yeah. So so whoever's videotaping this, because I just watched. So I was in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm wearing a, uh, a white shirt, and I had a bowl cut, and I was shaking. Oh, there. Then it was you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, no, I've watched this video so many times. Right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This Except is you. Right that's there. your yeah, ear? Exactly. Yeah, that's me right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I had a ticket, so I've shown uh, my buddy uh, as proof. How, like, how did you find yourself? Well, because I remember, and like I, I always look back on old shows. Like I oh, watched I an old Deftone show from '97 oh, in Fort Lauderdale. I found a Limp yeah. Biscuit show from '97, and so I was like, "Yeah, let's look up Slipknot '99." And I found it, and I start watching it, and I'm just like, "Dude, that's me!" Like I remember my haircut. I, I know what the, the back of my head looks like. Yeah, no, I mean, dude, it was the that was the the bowl cut, the the split down the middle, and I was shaved all up underneath so you can see it yeah, it's so stupid damn that's fucking sick. oh wait no no see no there i am right there straight ahead that is actually my head right fucking there that is me <laughs> yeah that's me right there bro <laughs> that's that sick. is fucking me <laughs> that's fucking sick dude yeah 100 percent, dude that is me that's so stupid <laughs> yeah you look like what's going on here like well because i remember um, is, is that when the beard just oh, grew? i didn't have a, i didn't have it a just beard. grew at that no, i had no though. beard um Let's see, I would have been in, shit, I guess I would have been in uh, 10th grade at that point. Yeah, because I moved uh, up to Georgia, I think that year, 10th or 11th Damn. grade. Holy shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so I found myself in that video, and I, a, a buddy of mine. There I am. Yeah, so I posted something recently, and then somebody commented on it, and then I showed him the picture, uh, the picture of the ticket. I was like, here I am, dude. I was at that fucking show, man. I actually met Mick, and it was really funny, because he's like, yeah, uh, we're playing at uh, 3 o'clock on the side stage. You know, you probably won't care about my band. Like, he didn't think that it was going to be anything you could tell at that time. He didn't have his mask on, so nobody knew, but That's I was one of those sick. that I think I picked up, like, a spin magazine or something, and in the back, I remember... They had albums coming out, and I remember just seeing the cover, and I'm like, dude, I've got to get that record. Mm. Yeah, and then they played that year. And then I believe it came out in June of that year. Like I think it was like June 17th or July 17th. I don't know why I remember that date. Because um, I actually uh, – or it was like the 19th or something. Because uh, I moved to Georgia, and I got it like a week early. So it's something like that. Slipknot not like, trivia. June. June, there you go. See, look, I was close, close man. Yeah. I was close. I remember it was something like that. And so I, I think I had gotten it on it's the 17th. Memory. Yeah, I have a stupid I'm memory. I'm surprised they didn't do the 19th because it would be 19, 19, 90. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, I may have gotten it that because the guy I knew at the record store, he had had uh, copies of it early. And so he was a buddy of mine. And he's, I was like, I'm moving. And, uh, yeah, he let me get the copy of it. So we listened to it the whole drive up before it had released. And I had already memorized most of the songs. And mm. that record is actually what got me screaming in that style. So I used to practice my scream. Because I used to try to sound like Chino a lot. Yeah, uh, I really wasn't into doing a lot of the, like, screams that I do now. And uh, the fry scream, I guess. Yeah. You know? And that's kind of what got me started was that record. So Damn. Yeah, good story. That's fucking sick. Funny that we just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Thanks made, for pulling up the video. You made a cameo. It's fucking badass. <laughs> Stupid as fuck. <laughs> so after, uh, so you were doing the Rip Hard podcast. You were doing the You You Are On podcast, mm -hmm. and then it's cool that that you got the itch to fucking come back and, and get and get a sick band together. Had to be, yeah. Oh, only it's only only worth doing if you're going to do it right. True. I think. True. Um, so. You know what it's like uh, replacing band members. It fucking sucks. It's terrible. So, um, so it's one of those things where we kind of Sean and I were just like, we're not. We're only going to do this if like it works musically and like we think the dudes are cool. And uh, 
Yeah. And yeah, but we just wanted to yeah. say, like, it, our agreement yeah. was this has to sound the best thing we've to, ever done. Yeah, it has to be better than what we used to be, yeah. uh, or yeah. it just ain't happening. So that, and I feel like if you kind of set that as the standard and then just stick to it, that's that's the thing. Because sometimes, man, when bands come back, it can go either which way. Uh, sometimes it's like I wish they stayed in the past, um, mm-hmm. and it, I think that the the fear is always, you know, coming out with something and then it being like old and tired sounding or something like that. Sure. So, yeah. So, yeah. So we just took the time to make sure that it was not that. Um, Good. And um, that it just sounded like basically we never went anywhere, but got better somehow. Good goal. Yeah. Well, first step is the sick drummer. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely helps. Yeah. De- it, um, I think that uh, it's like really, really important um, that even when there's like uh, like a central writer or something, you know, like or a central vision for a song that uh, you figure out a way to make it everybody's song. But that means that like the people that you're working with uh, have to have like their own like way of contributing to that or like taking things their own direction and that's actually harder to uh to find that's harder to find and pull off than sure. it seems like it um because you find a lot of people that are really good players or really good writers or like really good at their own stuff or only good at like learning shit exactly the way it's written um it's actually sure. really rare to get chemistry with Um, people who are great players and then also um, able to write and then also able to interpret um, stuff in a style and then add their own style into it and it work like there's a lot of there's a lot of factors to it true Um, speaking of Raphael what do you got to say yeah yeah. (laughs) I haven't heard you say anything (laughs) what's up dude that's all right. I'm listening so you guys have funny stories to tell no we're no we're we're saving the, the uh, best for last so 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 we are, we are hearing from you badass and, and Clint close it off on a on a high note the highest of notes yeah, oh yeah <laughs> yeah you were able to adapt that style and take it take the reins man for sure yeah speaking I'm, of I mean I'm like I just listen a lot to what you guys have been doing in the past and I mean, I've been through the whole process with like EL together as of the whole songwriting thing and, and we worked hard on it. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to be here. That's, that's what's up. Yeah, Krim Sick. showed me a video. We were looking, we were, we wanted to make sure that um, whoever ended up being lead guitarist was like godly. And that's, and basically we're looking at different different people and Krim showed me this video of him uh that i had never heard of him but what what was it it was like i think you were doing some something from an something from an obscure song i don't know could be yeah like it's a bunch of arpeggios really really uh not just fast but like really musically cool but like yeah Krim showed it to me and was like I think this guy would be good, and uh, I heard <laughs> like I, I, I think this guy very can do it. Very good. Be good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I forget which one it is, but like it's a black background, and uh, it's probably uh, Ethereal Skies. Yes, by Obscura. Yes. Yeah, it can be that one. That shit is crazy. So um, saw that and was like, yeah, all right. Under could, black skies. We'll talk that to one? this guy. That's a guitar. Yeah, look at that. I think that's a different one. I think um, it's called Ethereal Skies yeah. by Obscura. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a video of him with a black background. It's not that one. It's a little bit older, but like... Yeah, it's old. It's it's uh, it's great. I like that you put the title. That's nice. It's easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> Iconic. It's e- even older. <laughs> so he's, sit- he's sitting yeah, yeah, yeah. down. He's sitting I down. Think, it's I not think close up. You can uh, find it on YouTube easy, much easier if you type in uh, Obscura Ethereal Skies. Yeah. Playthrough. Yeah, so hmm. I saw that and was like, sold. Sold. This would be... 
Yeah, it's this one. Boom. Yeah, you can baby. Be <laughs> but it was the but it was the middle part, right? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, it was the middle part. There is a most a most free. Yeah, it was probably there. Yeah, most most played. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> it's a good guess. Yeah, you tried coming in there. Yeah, no, not me. I couldn't do that if God himself was teaching me. <laughs> I mean, like, are you thinking numbers? Or are you just thinking memorization? Or are you thinking, because you know the scale? Like, what the hell is going through your mind at That's that That's a point? great question. What, what are you thinking about? Yeah, it's basically chords. Like, I'm thinking chords and then just... Arpeggiating like, the chords. Arpeggiating yeah. the chords, yeah. And then, like, adapting some of those things. Because I've written this together with our drummer, Sebastian, and... Um, Actually, he sent me like a sketch of this thing, and um, he doesn't really play guitar, so I had to tap a few of those <laughs> things and adapt it so that it yeah. sounds like it's Holy supposed crap. to sound. That's badass. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I saw that it was like the thing about yeah, it. Yeah, he's all right. Uh, he he's in. Well, yeah, but it's it's not <laughs> right. it's not just it's not just the shred. It's uh, the fact that. Um, the classical influence um, in mm. that, and um, yep. the ability, the fact that it sounds like real playing. Um, there's there's a bunch of factors, but like it, the way that he get, was getting around that note choice, um, and got to like really point out Crim's great ear for sending me this exact video. Mm. But like our song "No Rest No End," uh, we were working on this middle section that is like this big baroque part. That it is, it's not as fast as this, but it's like, I guess, in a similar vein. Um, so, it, having someone that like understands classical music, um, baroque music, that's that's. Uh, I'm not gonna say a requirement, but something I was really, really hoping for. Mm -hmm. So, hearing this, it was like, okay, that that's legit, and you can really tell the difference between a guitar player that just learns, like the neoclassical, like, entry level shit like just this the harmonic minor scale and diminished patterns and stuff mm -hmm. versus someone that like actually understands uh, the origins of where that style even comes from in classical music. And that's the latter is what I was looking for. Mm. So it's a, it's a rare find. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You got, yeah. you got the perfect band. Yeah. That's sick. Should do, do we, do we miss any, anything? Um, well, we have a record coming out in May. Okay. <laughs> date? Date? Yeah. We, it, no date. Uh, okay, so May. Well, what is the date? There is a date. But you should have a date before you, before you do a podcast, right? Well, I'm not allowed to say the date. Oh, or am I? shit. Well, we're allowed to say that the record's coming out in okay. May, but we haven't announced the date yet. Let's just guess the date. It's May Yes, so 20th, it's, it's a May. Friday in May. <laughs> May May 35th. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a actually, it's a Friday yeah. in May, and there's a one in front of it. Um Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so it's probably that would probably be the second Friday in May. Yeah. I'm Metal Blade. Yeah. Huh? I'm, yeah, I'm Metal Blade. Blade. Sick. Yep. It's called the Deceivers. Um, in, in, uh, I guess in the lineage of the Hinderers and the Concealers, uh, we don't count our self-titled. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know how that is. Um, but uh, me uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's, no. what, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our self title is a bit of a disaster, so we don't, uh, yeah. We, we decided to just forget about that one. It's time for reissue, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Um, yeah, so The Deceivers, it'll be out right at the beginning of May. The first single is going to be coming out right in March. Uh, second cool. single, April. And yeah, boom. The thing is happening. Well, it was an honor to hang out with, with the whole band. I know, know your schedule today is pretty fucking crazy. You probably you're going straight to LA. Yeah, we so, got we have like a twelve hour rehearsal right uh, now. Well, that's what you're. Well, yeah, it's fun. Red Red Bull, so it's fine. Yeah, that's right. Well, not anymore. Red Bull coffee. <laughs> I'll get another one. Sick. Well, uh, where where can people find you guys? At Al Levy URM Audio, or you know, I'd say find us on Instagram at Doth Official. Or okay. Doth Official. Yep, and it's all right there. Yep, to get all of us there. 
Boom, sick. I do make yeah. my own creams. That's what people always tell me, Sean's creams. But actually, it's Sean Z screams. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> if you look at it. <laughs> yeah, I have an assortment Sean's of creams and tattoo Sean. lotions. I have a whole line like, I'm what? developing. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> Sean's <dude>. creams. <laughs> Somebody said that to me, and I have not been able to stop seeing it. <laughs> Yeah. You're <laughs> you're fucked. I, I never <laughs> thought it. about Sean's creams. Before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cream, dude. Yeah. Sean's creams. No, no, no. Lotions and tattoo creams. That's what we're gonna oh, stick with. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's all it's all it's, it's all positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, dude. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. All right, yeah. it's good. Thanks, thanks man. Dude, thanks for having, having us. Having Anytime. Us. That's yeah. it. Later. Yeah.